You know, I come from Washington, D.C., where last week, week before last, $40 million was stolen by some employees inside the government. <laughs> and when Bill talked about $600 billion, I thought about how much of the six, how much money do we spend in Iraq and Afghanistan every month? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm stunned that we are suggesting that all we need to do is get the bags of money, take them to Africa, give them to the Africans, and let them decide and bypass the government. Well, let me tell you something this evening. I don't care how you vote. That's not going to happen because we want to know what's happening to our money. Everything is changing. That's one thing about AID. It's always changing. And let me say one thing. Say Sisu Mobutu, every time we talk about corruption, we talk about Mr. Mobutu, who stole millions of dollars in the Congo. Why shouldn't he have stolen them? We were in the Congo to start with to stop communism, not to help the poor people of the Congo. We were not there for that purpose. We know that. We wanted the Congo's precious metals and we wanted to keep the Russians out. So he is Mr. Corruption. Now, if I gave a test tonight to people in this room of how many corrupt politicians or corrupt states in Africa, not very many people here would pass. I didn't know we had so many countries doing so well until Mr. Atete spoken. We got 16 countries, got 18 countries. They're doing well. That is an enormous track record. Now, for every Mobutu, that you have in Africa, you have some non-Mobutus. I wish, for example, that President Mandela could have been here tonight to have heard these remarks. He would have grabbed some of the people by the throat and said, what do you mean? We know people who've attacked Bono for, for his notion that we ought to be digging wells all over Africa that people walk two and three miles a day in search of water, not in search of water, in search of bad water. We need all the help we get. Why do we turn to America? Because we are a generous nation. And we, you know, President Bush said when he was in the campaign the last time, he said, we're not going to engage in nation building. We're going to let the people do their own thing. But when we got to Iraq, we found out we better start doing some nation building. And on one day we hated the UN and the next day we were begging UNDP to come and help us solve the problems in Iraq. One of the reasons that we have to help Africa, and I know we've discounted all these programs we had over the years, smallpox. We discounted onchocerciasis, thousands and thousands of Africa Africans involved in river blindness, and we found a cure for it, working with the private sector and working with AID. So millions of acres of land have been liberated because we saw this disease. So let me just say, for every corrupt politician in Africa, we have a history of some great politicians in Africa. There was a man who headed up a country by the name of Tanzania. His name was Nereri. I can't recall the new president of Tanzania, but we're talking about his work in Tanzania and how this country is moving forward. We had a place called Liberia, and for years we propped it up Tubman in Liberia. And people said, when is it going to change? One thing about Africa, it is capable of change, and that's what we're working with. We now have a woman in Liberia by the name of Surly Johnson, who walks into a living hell and now is going to build a nation state, she will not be able to build it without the help of the American community and the development community. We have a chance to do something in Liberia, one of our own quote unquote colonies. Why do we do it? Why do we work with Americans? Why do we do things in Africa? Because we know how to get things done. Sometimes we start out the wrong way. But almost invariably, at the end of the day, we end up in the right way. Then they say, well, you know, we can't find, we can't find any good politicians in Africa. 
In Mozambique, there was a man by the name of Wanjang Shizano. This year, he was voted a $5 million peace prize for the way he ran his country with good governance. I remember when people were giving him hell, but he said, wait, I'll prove to you that we can run this country and bring help to the people of this country. So he got a $5 million prize for doing things right. We also know about our president in Mali for now who's doing a great job in Mali. These things just don't happen. Our ambassadors and our aid technicians, they work night and day in trying to make all these things happen. This is a complicated world we live in. Africa got 53 countries, 800 million people. And by the way, don't discount colonialism. Don't say that we want to go back to the old days when Africa had free trade and everything was wonderful. In the old days, everything was not wonderful. In the old days, people were sick, and often they did not know it. And then some people make the argument, say, why are we involved in antiretrovirus? We should have a program of treatment, of, of prevention. Sure, we should have a, a program of prevention. But if your family, if they have HIV-AIDS, they want some of that antiretroviral. So we got to do that. And what we are saying here tonight, we have to change all the things that we say. No, aid is not right, but we have an opportunity to change it. One thing we have learned over the years, our programs must be owned by Africans. They must be African-led. They must be sustainable, and they must be accountable. One minute. In the age of technology, we don't need to wait two years to find a crook in Africa our computers can find them almost overnight. So when we apply the technology, we can identify the crooks. And let me tell you something else. 9-11 will be coming back unless we respond sooner than later. And if we don't respond to Africa and their needs, the Chinese will because the Chinese are coming. And they don't ask questions about democracy and good governance and free press and justice. They just want the raw materials.